Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. What's the matter, boo? Do you want to sit in there? Go in there. Go on your bed. Go on. Go in there on your bed. Good boy. Come on. He's fretting today. Boo's fretting. I don't know why. Hi, Alan, Susan, Lisa. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hi, Bubble. Hey, Jane. Hey, Katie. Okay, guys, I'm going to get straight into it today because I've got a lot to get through. <laughs> and by a lot, I mean... Ugh, this lot. Yeah, lots and lots to get through. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that Arteza sent me some supplies to try out and review. Now, uh, they have not sponsored this video, so I'm not getting paid to say their products are amazing or anything like that. But they did send me the products for free. And the uh, agreement is that you get the products, you review them, you do have to do you know, a video or a post or whatever it is that you've agreed to do, but that's the limit on what you have to say, okay? Uh, if you look in the description down below, before we get started, you will see that I have put links to all the products that they sent me. The top section is the US products on the US store, and the bottom section is the U it links to the UK store, but it's actually EU. So depending on which side of the world you are, that depends on <laughs> which one you want to use. Um, I should also say that their products are on Amazon. That's where I purchased mine originally. Um, obviously not the ones they sent me, but the ones that I purchased. And it does seem to come free of charge postage. Uh, I've not been charged for any postage, at least, for the stuff that I've bought. So, with that said, all the products you see in the description down below, US site, UK site, you can click the link, go and look at the actual product, okay? There is also, at the top of that section, a uh, discount code that gives you 10% off, which is valid until November 28th. I can't remember if it's the 28th or the 23rd. I think it's the 28th, but it says in the description. I've slept since I wrote it. Come on. <laughs> um, I definitely put the date on, though. And I do have to mention that those links are affiliate links to my affiliate thing on Arteza. Hopefully you all know me enough by now to know that I do not showcase products that I don't actually like. I will be 100% honest with you about all the products. I don't, th there's no point in in being shady and saying, oh yeah, this is great when it's really not. If I'm not gonna use it, I'm not gonna showcase it to you. So the fact that I'm doing a complete video for our teaser should tell you that the products aren't all that bad, actually. And I'm coming to you from, I've deliberately reviewed them from the point of view, not as a person who does art and is an artist, which is, what most of the uh, videos I've seen have been about. I'm looking at it in terms of, I teach art, would I recommend this product to my students? Because what I would use and what you would use or what I would recommend for you to use or buy, not necessarily the same things because I'm a professional artist and most of you aren't. So I'm looking at it strictly from the point of view as an art teacher, would I recommend these products to you as students, probably on a budget? What do we think? Okay, so let me tell you what we've got to begin with. These are separate, but they're not separate. They're only separate because I keep forgetting. <laughs> uh, I have the set of 60 Arteza gouache. That's the first thing I got. This includes 12 metallic colours, or they're actually listed as pearlescent, but they look metallic, um, which are here. 
and the reason they are here is because I keep forgetting that some of them are metallic because it doesn't actually show you on the pot. This is washi tape that I've put round that I tried initially when I had them in the box, but that didn't help. So they come in this box, which is really nice. It's 100% recyclable, which is fantastic. It's also quite useful if you like these kind of boxes. Uh, and it had plastic inserts. The only thing that let it down in the packaging, in my opinion, because this is really useful. I, I've kept the box purely and only to be able to refer to this uh, and to show you. As soon as I'm done with this video, I'm going to cut this bit out and stick it on the wall. So I've got a reference for all the different colours. Um, the inserts are plastic and they're just like little dishes of six, but they're loads and loads of trays. And if you spread them out, it covers the entire table. Not practical. Obviously, I took them straight out and shoved them in the box. But you know me and packaging like this, out of sight, out of mind. So for two weeks, I forgot I had them. <laughs> and so I shimmied around all the packaging. You know me. I did email Arteza and say, guys, plastic packaging, nil point. Everything else is fantastic, but the plastic? How about cardboard? If you can make a nice piece of box like this, sturdy enough to carry that weight of gouache, you can make cardboard inserts that we can recycle. Um, and they've taken that on board and said, we like it. You will also find, if you look on their website, um, uh, no, it's not actually on the box. But if you look on their website, it does tell you which of their products are vegan, which is interesting. A lot of their banged books are listed as vegan, which is quite important to a lot of people. Um, obviously, glues and stuff, not often vegan. Thought I'd mention that. I did also say to them, you know, if you're going to promote the fact that your products are vegan, perhaps you should actually put a vegan sign next to the products that are. Or at least vegetarian friendly, you know. Again. They liked that idea, so maybe they'll do that in the future. I also received this, which is a 72 pack of watercolour pencils. Came in this gorgeous tin, really nice. Uh, and again, plastic inserts for the pencils. You take them out. I think it was three layers. You spread them over your desk and you can't see what you're doing. So out they came. But then once I'd taken the pencils out, I realised that actually everything fit in this one box. So what I did was this. I put my gouache in here. Use this as a palette. Here's the colours. You can see what you've got. You can rummage. I love it. I think Arteza should consider swapping to this kind of packaging for everything, to be honest. Because these tins, once you've used the packaging really useful. I have a video that I'm going to show you on top. We'll get to the art in a second, I promise. I need to get all this out before I forget any of it. Um, I have a video on how to convert one of these tins to uh, on-the-go palette that clips onto the top of a tripod, uh, because that's what I did with the box of 48 colour pencils that my colour pencils came in. Now I purchased the colour pencils myself after I received the watercolour pencils. So these were sent to me. The regular pencils I purchased because I wanted to see the difference. Uh, I'm not overly familiar with watercolour pencils. The watercolour pencils I have used are the ink tents which are not really watercolour pencils. They're proper ink in a pencil which is completely different. So I wanted to really test watercolour pencil versus ordinary pencil because I felt that that was a fairer comparison if you like. Hey Arzen, Combi, Brandy, I'm missing people as they're coming in but hello. I've got a lot to get through today, sorry I've got to get through this. So this is nice and compact now and fits in my caddy. These boxes are incredibly strong, but this is also incredibly heavy because it's got 60 gouache and I am incredibly clumsy, clumsy. So I've popped one of my big thick elastic bands on here, not because the tin isn't any good. It actually is. I don't even need the band to hold the tin together. It holds together fine. But if I drop this, we're going to have paint everywhere. It's going to be a mess. So for my own safety, I put a band on it. 
I also have, this is the, well, let me skip to the pencils. This is the set of 72 pencils here. So let me get those a second. There may not be an entire set of 72 here because I am using them a lot. Um, which, again, if you know me, that means that they're actually not bad at all. I'll get to the proper review in a second, but um, I don't use stuff. If I use stuff and it doesn't work properly the first time, I'm like, yeah, throw it in the corner. You never get to see the light of day again, and eventually I give it to somebody else. But I am using these. so, And you can tell because some of them are missing and some of them are shorter than the others. With all of the Arteza products that I've tried so far, what I've found is that the small um, options, the small uh, small quantity options, what's the right word? The small quantity options, you know, like when you get 12 or 20 or 24, those colours are a bit strange. They're not the regular colours you would expect, but once you actually start using them, they are the colours that you actually use. So somebody's really put some thought into which colours go in which sections. However, that said, there are in the big set quantities a lot of colours that are very, very, very similar. Uh, I noticed it particularly with these orangey colours. Now bear in mind I'm colourblind. So uh, the greens and blues all look pretty much the same to me, but I just, I looked at all the yellows and oranges and peach colours here. And if you look at these, you can see just how many actually almost look identical. They are shaded, but I don't think having that many is necessary. Um, so if you are on a very tight budget, I think 48 would be enough. You don't need turmeric and honey. I mean, the the difference the difference is there, but the difference is negligible, if I'm honest. Um, so if you can splash out, or you're getting it as a present, or you're getting a discount code like we've got in the discount bar below in the description bar below. Um, <laughs> smooth segue, smooth segue. Um, if you're getting discount or whatever, or you're treating yourself, then get as many as you can. Get the 72 set. Get the 60 set of gouache because you get the metallics and they're gorgeous. Um, do the do the big pieces. Get the big paper. Go for the A3 paper. You can cut it down to A5 or whatever you want. But A3 is hard to find, okay? Go for the big stuff. But if you're on a very tight budget or you want to buy more than one thing, I would recommend going for the middle. Uh, the 12 or 24 is not quite enough colours. The 72 is a little bit too much for a lot of beginners. So that would be my my recommendation as a um, art teacher to my students. I would say don't get the 72 unless you are, like if all you're going to use, like Risha does purely watercolour pencil. She loves watercolour pencil and then she goes over watercolour pencil later with the dry pencil. That works for her. For her it would be worth getting the 72 but if you're mixed media I'd go for the 48. I don't think you need 72. So what am I using to sharpen my pencils? I'm just using my regular sharpener. Uh, I don't know where it is right now. It's a little box sharpener that sits on the desk. It's linked to my Amazon store, descriptions down below. It's just a cheap, no brand sharpener, but it works really well. Uh, I think one of the, I think it was Happy D Artist recommended it on her channel and said it was a really good sharpener. Uh, and I bought it and I love it. It gives super sharp points. Look at these massive, super sharp points. Now, watercolor pencils. <laughs> uh, I love sharpening pencils. Courtney drives me mad with her stubby little blunt things. Unfortunately, watercolour pencils are more brittle than regular pencils, so sharpening to this kind of a point actually is a bit of a detriment. But I'll show you that. You'll see, you'll see that when I actually use them in a second. So following on from the watercolour pencils that they sent me, sorry about the noise, just pretend it's ASMR, uh, I purchased for myself 
the 48 set of colour pencils. Again, I could have gone for the 72, but I've got other sets of 72, and honestly, I think there's at least 50 in each set that I've never used. So I went for the middle ground, I went for the 48. I like the selection of colours. There are not 48 here, because there are at least 15 being used for current projects that are in my pencil case. So that tells you that these are worth using. Prismacolor are generally the mixed media artists choice for pencils. There's been some controversy about whether they are worth the money these days because of the manufacturing and blah blah blah. I'm not going to get into that. I have the oldest possible set. Mine are called Charisma Colour, that's how old they are. Um, so I've not had any problems. However, uh, I have used some of the new ones and I'm not overly impressed with them. Uh, they're not horrendous, they're still very good, they're still much better than most pencils on the market, but they're not fantastic for the amount of money you spend on them. If you're on a budget, these are a very good option. I will I will tell you that. They are comparable to, to the Prismacolors and they are creamy. So when you blend them out, you can layer and layer and layer them, but then you can go over with a white and cream them out if you want to and burnish them and they, they work really well. We have <laughs> the simple one. There's four of these actually. There's one with a super fine tip. This is the, uh, that might be the super fine actually. There's big, meat, small, little, and then there's a, there's either one between, I think there's one between these two. Yes, there's one between these two in the set of four and it's in my sketch kit out in the car so I completely completely forgot um, if you use the if you have the Koi brand watercolors these are identical to their brush they even open the wrong way um, there's four in a set so they're good water brushes no hesitation on them for the price of the other two sets of water brushes that they do I'd go for the professional ones actually next time I went, deliberately went for the budget ones because I figured most people who went on the website would go for the cheapest option. So I deliberately picked the cheapest option because I knew that's what my students would get. These are good. There's nothing wrong with them. They're perfectly fine. They work as water brushes. They're easy to refill once you work out which way they open. See, they open the wrong way. Nice, easy to refill things. I've eat, oh, I can't do it up now. There we go. It's so confusing when you're a lefty and things suddenly work the right way. Um, you can even, because the body is so squishy, you can even just refill it like that from your water bro bottle. So there's water in there now. Perfectly fine, good water brushes. They do stain and I can't figure out if that is the bristles or if that is the watercolour pencils. Um, I've not like I say, I'm not familiar enough with watercolour pencils or watercolour brushes, for that matter, to say whether that's the case. Um, the pencils haven't stained my other brushes, but they're not white nylon, so I don't know. Jury's out on that one. I need to figure that one out. Or if somebody else knows, please let me know. Uh, but yeah, they do stain. <sighs> almost there, almost there. Nearly art time. Bear with me. The next thing they sent me was a set of pens. These are not ballpoint pens, sadly, but they are retractable gel pens. This intrigued me because gel pens, you know me and lids. All your water brushes are stained. Of different brands or the Arteza ones? Because I don't know if that's a thing that water brushes do in general. Because I don't normally use water brushes. I do use a water brush now. It's out of my sketch kit. <laughs> I carry it with me in case I don't have water with me. Um, yeah, these are retractable gel pens. So when you're writing with them, they feel comparable to... I'm trying to think. Oh, 
although they're thicker, all your brands of watercolour brushes have stained. Okay, it might just be the nylon bristles then. Thanks, Lisa. I wasn't sure if that was which it was, whether it was the pen pencils or the paint, the brushes. But if all brands stain, then that's just a water brush thing, isn't it? Although these are a lot thicker, they are very comparable when you're using them to the Hobonichi pens, the, um, what are they, U Mitsubishi, Uniball Mitsubishi. They're not like the Signos. The Signos are thick and creamy almost to work with. These are very definitely gel pens, but they're quite nice to work with. I will say, as a fast, tiny writer, don't bother. Um, there are 0.7 nibs, so if you've got tiny writing, it's far too thick. Far too thick. They do give you, and this is why there's um, <laughs> this is why there's tape on these, uh, two blacks. One is a 7 and one is a 5, and because I don't always have enough light to see the, the 0.5 and the 0.7 written there, I put thick and thin washi tape on, because we're ghetto here. That's how we do things. Um, so the thick washi tape is the 0.7 and the thin washi tape is the 0.5. The 0.5 is okay to write with. Uh, I would prefer a 0.3. The 0.7s are nice to draw with. If you just want them for colouring or drawing or doodling, which is actually on the packet, I think most of what they showcase on the packet is colouring and doodling. Here we go. Um, they did lose a point for the plastic packaging. There was no need for this. An entire pa plastic package they could have made that cardboard like a fold down cardboard box would have been much nicer um, yeah they do show here that it's coloring and doodling rather than writing so maybe that's because that's what they're designed for so jury's out on that one I have used them for drawing and coloring they are quite nice to work with they're not my beloved ballpoint pens but they're not bad and they don't smear. Hallelujah! Um, on different types of paper, like the Hobonichi paper, sometimes they take a little bit to dry, a little bit, but mostly they don't. Uh, it does say, obviously they're non-toxic and acid free, which is great. They're smear proof and vibrant colours. The vibrant colours, yes, they are. Smear proof, pretty much. I haven't had any issues, but um, I don't write left-handed, so it would take somebody... I might send... Actually, there's a lot of really bright pinks here. I might send the bright pink ones to Courtney and let her try them as a lefty because I'm never going to use these, but she will. Um, I, I don't use pink. I just don't use pink. Uh, and then as a lefty, she can tell me if, it's, if it smudges when she writes because I can't test that, obviously. So colouring, doodling, sketching, absolutely yes, they're really good. I especially like them layered with the watercolour pencils. But for writing, if you write small, like tiny, they're too thick. If you write fast, they tend to skip. They don't blob, no. I have Well, I haven't had them blob yet, let's say that. I've used them, but they haven't blobbed on me yet. I'm sure they will at some point, because that's what gel pens do. Um, but so far, nothing, which I like. But like I said, I can't really write with them because I write too fast. If you write slow, like normal to slow speed, they'd probably be perfectly okay for writing. And if you've got medium to large handwriting, they'd be perfectly fine. But for me, as a tiny scribbler, they're just, no, absolutely not. Um, so again, because these colours, a lot of these colours, oh, there she is as well, Rachel, hello. Um, because of these colours, I don't use pinks and purples and that kind of colour. So I might send the purple ones to Rachel because she's got big, slow handwriting. Like she writes an inch high. Um, she can get at least one letter on the back of a postage stamp, whereas I could write an essay. So I might send her the purple ones to test and see if they work better for her as a large, slow writer. But certainly for sketching, they've been fine. Um, somewhere between me and Burgess, you're a medium, yeah. Well, I don't think, bet yeah, well, between me and Burgess, we're like the, the 
massive end of the scales. My letters average about two millimetres high, hers average about half an inch. <laughs> oh, uh, one thing I should say, I haven't been able to test it on lots of different papers. However, what I did find is that on some papers, you can use a water brush with these and they will move like watercolour medium. So if you use them on watercolour paper, uh, I use them, I think, in a moleskin watercolour book. Um, and you straight away, don't let them dry, um, straight away go in with a watercolour brush. You can use them as water based, but for the most part, they don't move with water. Now, that doesn't mean they're permanent. It just means that they're not easily smudgeable. So if you wanted to do your doodling in pen and then go over with watercolour pencil to colour in, you're not going to have horrible big streaks or whatever. Uh, I wouldn't suggest necessarily outlining in black and then colouring with water. I think that would be too much. But, you know, using comparable colours to do your doodles and then filling in with water, I think you would be fine. And finally, <laughs> I know, right? They sent me so much stuff. I was like, are you sure about this? Um, I received this stuff. Now... I talked about this before. This is the mixed media pad of paper. It comes in a pack of three, so you actually get 180 sheets. And this is the A5, five and a half by eight and a half. <clears throat> I don't think five and a half by eight and a half is actually A5, but it's close enough. I think that's American sizing. The mixed media paper, when I first, my initial reaction, Honestly, when I pulled it out of the paper and I touched it, are they similar to the Pilot G2S or the Pentel Energels? I've not used the Energels, but I've got a Pilot G2. And yes, it is quite comparable to that. Um, in fact, I find the Pilot G2, when I write with it on a moleskin, pa on moleskin paper, which is obviously, I use moleskin, so that's what I tested everything on. Uh, when I write with moleskin paper, they skip the exact same way that the Pilot G2 does for me. So, yes, I think they probably are comparable to the Pilot G2s. Eight and a half by five and a half is half letter size, so it is American sizing. Yeah, I thought it was. It's comparable to A5. I mean, it's, you know, it's basically the same. Letter size and A A4 is not that different, except that you guesstimate how big your sizes are, whereas we actually use scientific methods. Hey Amber. Oh hey Cody, sorry I didn't see you come in. Um, Mika's here too as well. Everybody who's in class, give Mika a pat on the back. She's awesome. Um, she's been helping me out this week because as you know KK's off for a while um, for personal reasons and I needed somebody to help me with organising my lists because it's class release season so I'm up to my ears in lists and spreadsheets and Mika has been beavering away behind the scenes getting everything tidy for me and having a good old sort out she's fab so give her a give her a thumbs up to say thank you because <laughs> without her I wouldn't be doing this review today I'd be like can't can't still still doing spreadsheets still doing spreadsheets still trying to find information no Mika's doing all that for me at the moment Thank you so much. Back to the paper. Sorry, I got sidetracked by chat. This happens in a live stream. My honest and initial reaction when I opened this pad, took the paper out, I was like, oh, I don't like the feel of the back of the paper. Honestly, do not like the feel of this cardboard. Ooh, I don't like the feel of that. And then when I opened the pad and run my hand across the paper, I was like, ah! <laughs> and I literally dropped it. <laughs> now I stress this is a me thing okay this is a me thing I have issues with certain textures um things like cotton wool and certain wood textures I can't touch just thinking about it is making my putting my teeth on edge I can't touch unvarnished wood or untreated wood oh and fibrous papers are the same. Now, this paper was fibrous. Oh, sorry, it's making me go funny just thinking about touching it. Shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. 
Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. I have been trying with this paper. Honestly, I have been trying with it. Um, I had three of these. I've used one of them, trying to get used to the paper. I can't do it. I, I tried. I really tried. Yeah, I did find, it's funny you should say that, Lisa, your son can't touch paper after washing his hands. I'm exactly the same. I can't. I always have hand cream on hand. I've run out of my beloved hand cream right now and I'm like, I've got to get down to the range before eight to go and get some because I used it up this morning. <laughs> if you put hand cream on before touching this paper, it is not as bad, but I still can't use it. That is not to say that the paper is bad, okay? It's not. It's just purely a texture thing for me. I have used up one pad of paper trying to get used to the paper, which has been an awful lot of me taking a page out and trying to touch it and then it ended up in the bin because I just couldn't have it anywhere near me. So a complete waste of 60 pages of paper. Um, the other one I split up between my Urban Sketcher group and gave a few pages to a few different people and said, here, try this and, and let me know what you think of the paper. I didn't tell them anything about it, just said, tell, tell me what you think. Most people really liked it and two of the eight people I gave some pages to actually went and bought this paper to use. So it can't be that bad. One other person was like me and like, oh, I can't, I can't even touch it. Ugh. Um, so I still have this one. I'll probably just give this one away. Um, I may, I, I th what I was originally going to do, and I suggested this to our teaser, was to get them to send me watercolour paper. And I would send all of this mixed media paper to Anna because she's got some, some acrylics and stuff to play with. Um, but they said, you know, just use ordinary watercolour paper. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, but this stuff, as mixed media paper goes, everybody who's used it has said, yeah, it's great. It's fine. It's paper. I like it. 180 sheets for the price of it and the big spiral rings and everything else. It's also completely um, perforated. So there's no messing about with trying to get it off the spirals. It's all perforated. You just bend it and tear it and it comes straight off no issues um all of that is perfectly fine but i can't use this paper personally so big disclaimer there i'm pretty sure it's me but if you have issues with touching dry ha hairy things <laughs> don't get this paper go for the watercolor paper get the watercolor notebook i wish that's what i'd done in the first place actually because i'm pretty sure i would have loved it um, so that's all going in my giveaway pile and today um oh I don't have oh, I've finished my I finished my moleskin so I'm going to use this one this is just um this is not showcasing the brand or anything this is just what I have it is a art alternatives book um I just picked it up cheap somewhere it works it's paper i'm not particularly fussy on paper as long as it's smooth and this is nice and smooth so um i do wish i had i guess i should have just bought some when i got the i should have just bought some when i got the pencils it never even occurred to me i've been waiting for their small five and a half by eight and a half paper books to come into stock but they've been out of stock for months i hope they restock them because that seems to be the popular size um, Jane, Jane Gizmo, didn't you buy the watercolour paper in the little books, the three and a half by five and a half? Was it you? Now we know how to break you under torture, just rub toothy paper on you and you'll crack. Oh, you only have to, <laughs> you only have to suggest it. Because <laughs> my brain, half of my brain is still thinking, oh, it's not too smooth, it's too hairy. It's too textured. It's not smooth at all. It's mixed media paper. It's almost like really hairy canvas. Uh, no, part of my brain is still thinking about those horrible little wooden chip forks. <laughs> this is what it does to me, you see. I am a smooth paper girl. 
Um, in fact, I will, I'll, I'll say this because the purchases discounts below they're affiliate links so they get me a little bit of a kickback without you having any you know it doesn't cost you anything extra or anything like that just you know you've bought through my link therefore I get like tuppence or something for having sold something <laughs> well I haven't sold it but you know what I mean affiliates you know how it works um once I've got enough money in the Arteza thing to buy one of the watercolour pads I will because what I can do is get the A4 portrait ones and cut them down into A5 landscape, which is what I like to paint on. So I'll do it that way. Once I've got enough to get one, I will pick one up. Right, let's make some art. Come on. Make some art. Let's make some art. If you go on my Instagram, ooh, same with paddle pop sticks and people look in the, oh, you mean like lollipops, frozen lollipops, oh, orange, orange sticks, those horrible little orange sticks they used to use to push back your cuticles, oh, it's all the same, I can't stand any of it, untreated wood, unvarnished pencils, anything like that, I'm like, get it away from me anyway I'm not using anything extra in my um, thing today what's going on here there we go other than I think I've broken my pencil where's my pencil case it's the biggest pencil case in the world I still can't see it I'm not using anything extra today and other than the Arteza products. I am using my own paper and I am using, I might use a glue stick. I might use, you know, general tools like a Uniball Signo pen or something like that, a white one. Um, but other than that, I'm going to use, see, there's all the, <laughs> there's the rest of the Arteza colour pencils. Uh, oh, there we go. There's a pencil. Let's use that one. Is this not the cutest little hole punch you have ever seen? Look how dinky, and it's got Jack Skellington on it. Look, Jack Skellington on my hole punch. And it makes dinky little holes and things. It's so cute. I don't even like making holes and things. Um, dinky little holes and things. Okay. Let me get rid of some of these boxes, because I only kept them so that... Well, I'm going to salvage the colour chart to put on my tin, but I only kept the packaging so I could show it to you. I don't, you know me, I don't keep packaging. I like my stuff out where I can see it in my little caddy. I'm going to have to find, I'm going to have to find my sharpener now. Oh, here it is. It's back here. I've reorganised my entire desk yesterday. This is my sharpener. It's in my um, Amazon store. It's not an Arteza one. It's just a cheap no-name brand. But look at that. Look at that point. Oh, love it. Right. Let's make some arty stuff, shall we? probably going to need my clips where are my clips why can I never find clips guys doesn't matter how many clips I own I can never find them ah here we go clips where did I get the caddy everything I buy is either from Am Amazon or eBay and if it's from Amazon then it's in my Amazon wish list up uh, no, my Amazon store link in the description down below I do not buy stuff when I go out to stores because nine times out of ten it's cheaper online but also <sighs> I'm too lazy to carry stuff home and I live up a really steep set of stairs that is just not worth trying to carry stuff up. You bought a similar sharpener from Muji. Yeah it's not a Muji sharpener. 
can't even see a brand name on it. Um, Happy D Artist put a link to it on one of her videos and I followed the link and went, oh, let's have one of them. And it's fantastic. It's excellent, especially for colour pencils. The other one I use is the triangular Faber-Castell one, which is better actually for the watercolour pencils because, like I say, the watercolour pencils, if you sharpen them too hard and then you try to use them with the point down, then they break because they're not meant to be used like that. They're meant to be used sideways, apparently. Might have had to use a, watch a couple of tutorials there. Okay, let's... Should we be all professional and stuff? Ah, I like that's going to happen. <laughs> uh, let's do a... This is just vellum tape. Scotch tape. I don't like paper tape because it doesn't lift off nicely. But this stuff, this magic tape, it's lovely. And I don't put it all stuck down. I just stick down the edge that's nearest to the colour that I'm going to be putting down. So I don't really have a plan or any particular thing that I'm going to draw. More Blackwing pencils. Oh my God, Amber, you're always sending me Blackwing pencils. You spoil me. Ooh. You know what I should use? It's so new, I haven't even used it yet. I haven't even sharpened it. This is the Palomino Blackwing All Black, which Amber sent me. I do like my Blackwing pencils because they don't smudge. Should we sharpen this baby up since it's spooky season? I haven't used this before, so this is not a review for the pencil. This is strictly reviews for the Arteza stuff. what I like about this you pull it out and you push it in and then this goes back in as you sharpen your pencil but when you can't sharpen your pencil anymore it doesn't keep going so it doesn't break the nib anyway <sighs> come on I want to get to painting what are we going to paint what are we going to paint Something Halloween-y, obviously. Yeah. I'm not particularly a... Well, you know me, I'm not really a brand snob when it comes to anything like pencils or anything like that. I do like my moleskin notebooks. Um, but, you know, pencil's a pencil. I like, the f I like them if they don't smudge. <laughs> and these days there's plenty of pencils that don't smudge, so. You're off now. Okay, see you later, Diana. So, let's do... No, I don't want to do grayscale today. Let's do... I'm going to pop these on because this paper does have a tendency to buckle if you don't hold it down. let's do I'm not doing Scarecrow from Batman <laughs> it's not happening we're doing something witchy it's Halloween I'm going to do a Let's just sketch out a basic face and go from there, shall we? I'm 
I'm trying to watch chat and what I'm doing at the same time. So. Scoob, what up? My puppy, he's got the moans today. I think we need to have a big floppy witch hat brim, don't we? That needs to happen. Yeah, I'm not really a comic book nerd, so I don't tend to draw that kind of stuff. Sorry. Let's give her some long hair, shall we? Because what's a witch without long hair, right? Says the pixie crop. Uh... I'm trying to keep it quite simple uh, because I found that what I really like doing with the gouache set is to paint the basic bits uh, but then you know kind of block in the basics and then go back in with pencil or colour pencil or whatever over the top um, and that works really well with the gouache. Uh, I think we need a moon, don't we? Let's give her a moon. Where's my round thing? Where is my round thing? Here's my round thing. Here we go. What size moon shall we give her? Uh, a little smaller than that. A little bit smaller. Not much smaller. A little bit smaller. Okay. Maybe that sort of size yes let's go for that sort of size moon is the lighting okay today because i've shifted all my lights and camera and stuff around so hopefully you're seeing a lot better today than we normally would Uh, I think I might let her hat kind of bend down at the top there. It kind of looks like it's not got enough room, so let's just bend it down at the back there. And I feel like she should be holding something. Maybe... give her oh I know let's give her a big old jack-o-lantern have her sleeve coming down around here. I'm trying to make, not make it overly detailed like I say I just want to get the basics down. Let's give her some more hair over here so we only have to draw one arm. 
Uh, let's give her a different layer on her dress, shall we? Let's give her a, a second layer there. Like a sort of top and skirt type affair. There you go, that'll do. Just do a bit of tidy up on the pencil work. Cute. There you go. So that's what we're starting with. So I'm going to block in the colours. Oh, I'm using the wrong black wing. Oh well, it's just pencil. I'm only I'm only sketching. It's not really. Uh, now, like I said, the Arteza pens sometimes they're waterproof on different papers. So I'm going to test them on this particular paper. And see what they're like on here. So that's straight away and that's after a minute or two. So that's immediately, you can see the colour running but you can still see the line underneath. So I'm going to let this one dry properly. Do you think that's dry enough yet? <laughs> I'm so impatient. Not running as much. Let's give it another minute. See so, what I mean? It's as it's dried, it's not as that's what maybe 30 seconds dry? That's straight away. That's after 30 seconds or so. And it's still not lifting up the colour, it's just spreading the colour. You know what I mean? So if you were doing tone on tone, so if you if I outline her hat in green, for instance, and then I used green colour pencil or green watercolour media, then I could use tone on tone with the, the outline. It wouldn't matter if it's smudged. How long's that? About a minute? I'm so impatient. Yeah, see, it's it's almost... It actually is still running a very tiny bit. It looks like it's not on camera, but it actually is very, very slightly. But if you were using colour, that wouldn't matter. So if you were spreading paint around, that really wouldn't matter, especially if you like dark colours like me. I think if I gave that another five minutes or if I was drawing something and then I left it overnight, I don't think that would run at all. On this paper, I did try it on Hobonichi paper. And it was still water soluble two days later. So, you know, as with everything, if it's not specifically saying it's waterproof, you need to try it on different papers. Right, let's block in some colour. I think I will do her background in the watercolour pencils with the watercolour brushes. And then I'll use the gouache to block her in. So you can see the difference between the two, because obviously watercolour pencils are... What's the word? Uh, 
Oh, come on. Watercolour pencils are transparent. <laughs> oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. I'm going to grab some dark colours. I want to do her background kind of dark bluey greeny kind of grey colours. Uh, I think most of my blues are actually from indigo. Um, maybe a purple. Uh, I'll pull the black out because I might need that later. I'm also going to pull that um, Where's the grey? There's an elephant grey, which is a really nice colour. Uh, no, that's green. I do have trouble telling the greens and the greys apart in this set, I have to say. Space grey, I might need that later. Oh, is that the green? Nope, that's sage. Where's elephant? Smoke. Oh, I'll use smoke. I think elephant is actually in the other, in my case here. Elephant. Elephant. It's a really nice colour. Oh, there's the pewter. That will do. Oh, coyote. That's a nice colour too. It's kind of a greenish grey. It's a very unusual colour. it so let's start with kind of purpley tealy bluey kind of colors in the background so we've got amethyst which is this dark purple we've got a lighter purple which is lavender mm, that might that's not too light that's too bright we've got aegean blue which is a nice dark teal color we've got ocean blue which is almost identical but it's slightly greener and uh indigo which is a nice dark blue blue transparent yes that was the word i was looking for can't be thank you <laughs> oh dear now what i have found with the watercolor pencils not so much with the ordinary color pencils but with the watercolor pencils you need to do a color test to figure out which one is actually the right color that you want uh, because you can think it's going to be one colour, and then when you add water, it looks completely different. So that's the Aegean blue. This is the ocean blue, which looks almost identical, but it's greener. So this is a very bluey green, bluey blue. Bluey teal, sorry, and this is more of a kind of greeny, petroly colour. Actually, I would say that was petrol blue and that's teal blue. But that's, that's just me. This is the amethyst, which is lovely. I've used this colour a lot, as you can tell. It's shorter than anything else. And the indigo, which is pretty much Prussian blue. Again, this one would get a lot of use. With the water brushes, I don't squeeze them. I just do that with them. And I find that's enough to get water down into the nib. So there's the Aegean blue. I'm rinsing my nib. I'm just using it like an ordinary water brush, really. It's the ocean blue. See, there is a difference in colour, but it's not massive. But they are quite good bright colours. So let's use the ocean blue where the light is. So I'm going to put that around the moon. Now I'm not an expert with watercolour pencils. Uh, but I do know that the smoother you lay down your watercolour pencil, the smoother the paint effect will look. 
Now, if you want the pencil look, because that's effectively the point of using watercolour pencils, uh, then you want to lay down a thick layer of colour and don't be afraid to use your pencil properly. But be aware that there will be lines in your work. If you don't want the lines, which I don't want the lines, they drive me crazy, use the side of your pencil. So down here we're going to have some light as well because that's where our jack-o'-lantern is. So I'm just putting lots of colour down. Where am I going to put her her sleeve? So let's have a sleeve kind of if her hand is there. Her sleeve would be sort of there-ish. Let's have a bit of a cuff on it, with a bit of a dangle. Yeah, let's say about there. I'm just trying to get her outlines. I'm going to go over in gouache, which will go over the watercolour anyway, so I'm not worried about um, being able to go over it. What I'm worried about is making sure that I get the colour down where I need it, because obviously this bit here, I wouldn't have coloured that if I hadn't checked where I wanted the thing to go. So I'm I'm pressing quite hard with the watercolour pencils, but not so I'm not digging into the paper. I'm kind of how can I explain it? I'm putting the pencil down sideways on the paper, and then I'm kind of tilting my hand up a little bit against my thumb. So I'm pressing down with this finger. Let me show you that way. That'd be easier, wouldn't it? Hang on. Let me get something to rest against. So I'm going from that to that. Do you see the difference? It's just like when you use chopsticks. So I'm using the side of the pencil. Do you ever apply wet brush to pencil first and then to paper as opposed to direct paper? No, I don't like doing that because what I find is it makes a mess of your pen pencils and then you have to wait for them to dry before you can sharpen them and it's a pain in the backside and whatever there. If I'm going to use pencils like that I will either shave off with a, a pen knife a little bit of the colour and put it on a palette and use it that way or I will scribble onto not very porous paper. Not wax paper because you can't colour on wax paper with a pencil but I will do it like this but lay down lots and lots of colour and then use the, that as a little mini paint palette. But I don't... Um, I'm just checking these blues because they both look the same. Uh, I don't use wet brush on the tip and flick and... Not unless I want to do flicky effects or something like that, but I'm not... I don't usually do that kind of thing. So I'm going in with the slightly darker Aegean blue, so that's this one. And I'm going over what's already there a little bit and then fanning outwards. I'm not worrying about where her hair's going to be too much. Just want that kind of aura effect around what's already there. So where's her sleeve? There's her sleeve. Oh, I didn't really want to colour that, never mind. So I think this bit actually could be a little darker. Like that. And then I'll do, maybe I'll skip with purple actually. Might do her in purple. I'll do, you just skip straight to the dark blue, I think, so we get a nice gradient of the three blues. Again, I'm going slightly into what's already there, so there's a seamless transition. And yes, I'm colouring over my stuff to uh, sticky tape, that's the word. I'm colouring over my sticky tape to make sure that I get all the way to the edges. Because if you get water on your sticky tape at the edges to spread the paint, your sticky tape will lift and then your paint will go under the sticky tape. And then there's no point in using sticky tape, is there? Okay, so let me just double check 
this is all hair, this is all dress, this is her arm, this is all hair. Mm. Let's do that bit in a little bit more. I can, I can always paint over it because these the, these pencils aren't waterproof after you you wash them. I mean, right, this is dry now. OK, so I can go back in with my water brush and I can still move it around somewhat. But not a lot. So I want to do all of the pencil work in one go. I don't want to do it piecemeal because that's how you get lines. So I'm going to go in with my big thick watercolour brush. More is more water when you're using watercolour pencils. I'm not going to bother using the brush as it is. I'm just going to put it in water because that's what I like using. If you can hear something in the background going <sighs> like a teenager, that's my dog. He has teenager hubs today. I don't know what's wrong with him. Okay, I'm going to start light to dark uh, and I'm going to blend out each section. So I will blend out this section first to show you. And I'm not going to be too prissy about the edges. I actually have started overlapping edges because it actually is easier rather than trying to paint right up to an edge. It's easier to just overlap the edges, especially with gouache, because it's uh, completely opaque. So get some water down onto that pencil to activate it first. Then you go in and move it around like paint. And I'm going to spread the water over to the mid blue and that's how you get a nice transition. Again spread it over, go over the edges a little bit it's fine. Put some water down into this area, get some more water and then I'm gonna spread the water across into this blue and bring it back. Spread it across, bring it back, and then we finish off with the dark blue. So you literally use work light to dark. Can you hear him in the background? <laughs> Mum, you're always working. <laughs> My paper is wrinkling up because I'm using quite a lot of water, a lot more water than I normally would for watercolour. Whoops. Um, but that's why we have clips on to stop the paper warping t entirely. It'll it'll dry a little bit wrinkly, but it won't be horrendous. OK. So the next section I'm going to do is this bit down into this bit of blue here. I actually think maybe that should be dark blue. Now that I'm looking at the colour again. Nope, that's black. So this should be the darker of the two blues, I think, in here. And then where's the indigo colour? Where'd the indigo go? Oh, it's there. Oh, I put the black over there. Okay. And then come down into here with a little bit more dark in this area. I'm going to do the top bit here first. Again, the light colour. And let it. I'm not over painting it into the moon area. I'm just letting it, you know, if it goes in, it goes in. I'm not being prissy about it. If it goes in, that's fine. We're using watercolour, over, we're using gouache over the top, so it doesn't matter. If you were going to watercolour it, that would be a different matter. Spread that out a little bit. Oops, a bit too much water there. So let's bring that down a little bit. And down into here. I'm going to go into the hair a little bit, and into the stick a little bit, into the blue, and bring the water down. Go across the area where the two work together and then into the dark area to liven up that blue. And then once it's wet, 
and activated, then spread it around and you'll get far fewer marks on your paper that way. Wash your brush, back to the light colour in and around the pumpkin. I'm going to add a little bit more water to there, bring that down here, bring those two together, blend this in, it's a little bit too much, so dry brush, pick up the water, it doesn't work as well with a watercolour brush as it does with a normal brush, but it does work as long as you dry your brush. A bit too much there as well. You can also use a bit of kitchen towel. And I'm not going to activate that bit because I'm going to erase that bit in a minute. Scoob, what is the matter with you? Why are you pacing up and down, boo boo? Boo! Boo! Come here! What's the matter? Come here! Scooby doo! Come here! Tell mommy what's the matter. Do you need to go pee? No, you just tip tapping around. He's just tippy tapping around. What's the matter? What do you need? Do you need to go out? I think maybe he needs to go out. Just give me a second. I'm, I'm waiting for this to dry anyway, so talk amongst yourselves. Get a coffee. Come on, Boo. What's the matter? Do you want to, do you want to go out? Come on then. Come on then. Come on then. Let's go pee. Right, he's peed, he's happy. You can sit in here right now, eh? Go to your bed, bed, Scooby, bed, good boy. Go to bed, go to bed, good boy. Anyone playing along? Anyone doing some art with me? This is something else you can do if you've got too much poo, if you've got pooling. Just grab a bit of kitchen towel and just place it in and it will just automatically absorb a lot of that pooled water. You don't have to dab it or press it or anything, just stick a corner of it into where the wet puddle is. Who's 
just making Halloween art with me. Come on, guys. Right, so that's the colour pencils. I like the colour pencils, i got to say. I didn't like them when I first tried them. However, like I said before, I'm not an expert in watercolour pencils. It took me a while to get used to them. I was expecting them to be like ones I've used before, the, the ink tents, but they're not watercolour pencils. They go super bright, bright and dense really quickly. You use watercolour pencils with stamped images. Oh, that's cool. What do you do? Wet the stamp and then colour on the stamp? Or do you stamp with watercolour, waterproof ink and then colour in with watercolour pencils? Amber's working in a junk journal. First one. Yes. Another convert. <laughs> I have got you all using... Got you all using junk girls. Okay, let's do her purple, shall we? Because we can. So I'm going to use the gouache for this. Show you how that works. Now, gouache is like watercolour, but any previous layers of gouache you use will remain um, water soluble. So if you put a layer down of this watercolour pencil and then you go back in with another layer, you're going to get very minimal bleeding because this is already, like you saw there, it's already mostly dry. You're going to get very minimal colour transfer, which means you can do glazes of transparent layers. If you use gouache in the same way, as soon as you put another colour on top of this, like for instance where I've gone in around the moon, if I had used gouache for the background and then I went in and did um, a gouache moon, all of that blue around there would reactivate and turn green around the outside of the moon. Not what we want, right? So you need to bear that in mind. Gouache never stabilises. I get a lot of people saying, oh, you shouldn't use gouache over acrylic like I do because then it's an unstable medium. Uh, gouache is an unstable medium to begin with. First off, it never dries. It remains water soluble even after 600 years, which is why restoring gouache paintings is such a massive, massive undertaking and takes so long because if you get it wet in any way, it all starts running everywhere. Secondly, it's opaque so you can layer it but once you layer something over the top you can't glaze with it you can only glaze with transparent layers so when you put something over the top you're going to get a mix of two colors unless you are very 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 careful not to disturb the layer underneath in which case you will get two layers of two different colors the other thing to remember is that although gouache does and can be used in a palette and I use it in a palette quite often unless it's been mixed with water you're going to struggle to reactivate it and it's going to crack and dry once it gets too thick it will crack so you see a lot of gouache paintings from the old masters on canvas that um, literally they are cracked beyond belief because they were rolled up on they were on canvas and then they were rolled up well if you put it on too thick it cracks so there's a limit to how much paint you can throw on unlike acrylic which because it's a polymer it's it's plastic the the sciency bit that causes it to do this okay you can look it up online I don't understand it. My, well, I know how I get the gist of how it works. I don't understand the science. But the bit that makes it go like this and flex is the difference between acrylic and gouache. Acrylic creates bonds that look like that, like fabric. Gouache creates flat, dry bonds. So you break it, you broke it. Or you bend it, you broke it. So I like to use my gouache on a palette and just put out what I need when I need it. 
If I'm working in the field, then that generally means I don't use an awful lot of colours because I, I'm trying to stick to only using a few colours and mixing them with white when I'm out and about because they just dry too fast, especially if it's windy. Um, but here, you know, we've got a little bit of playtime because uh, I love this colour. This is mauve. Yeah, it's quite cool in here and the cooler it is, the less fast your acrylic will dry, your gouache will dry. Plus, using a ceramic or a metal tin for your palette will help enormously because this will stay cold. The colder it is, the better it will be. I don't need a huge amount of colour, I don't think. So I'm going to start with that as a block colour. Maybe put a little bit more out. There's a really nice lavender grey in here as well. I think it's called Ballerina. Oh, there's, well, there's three. There's Mauve, which is very purpley. There's Taupe, which is kind of a little bit pinky. And then there's Ballerina, which is just the best colour ever. Uh, where is she? I use her a lot. And these are only 12 millilitre tubes, but they're lasting for ages. Oh, my ballerina might not even be in here because I use her that much. Oh no, where have I put her? The ice blue is really nice for winter skies. I love that one. Ballerina, there we go. It looks very pink, but it actually comes out very grey. It's that lavender grey that I like. So those are the three that I'm completely in love with. My colours. Vintage sepia or onyx black. Oh, hang on. Oh. Oh, rewind. Oh, right. Stamping colours, stamping images with vintage sepia or black and then using watercolour pencil with them. Yes, that's a nice idea. That's nice if you don't or if you don't want to spend time drawing something or, you know, if you don't have the skills to draw something or you just want an image that's really delicate and unusual and it's really tricky to draw those kind of things I don't, I don't even have the patience for that so it's it's quite nice it's it, yeah it's like coloring like using a coloring book pigment inks oh Mika's off to bed that's early for you Mika uh watching while Oh, Cody's watching while cleaning. Oh, I need to put a link. Remind me later, Cody. I need to link to Cambria's channel. I'm obsessed with living with Cambria. Not her cleaning because her cleaning her house is a little bit crazy. She like wipes down her kitchen counters five times a day. She hoovers at least twice. That's a bit mad. Um, I mean, I know she's got kids, but that's still a little crazy when they're at school. Um, but watching her helping other people who, like me, are really messy and need help sorting stuff in order to get the houses in order, her hoarder's stuff is fantastic. Because it's not, it's people like me who have hoarding tendencies as opposed to proper hoarders. You know, like the hoarders program is rat infested and dead cats and all sorts of stuff and cockroaches. No, most people aren't that bad. We're just pack rats. <laughs> And she helps pack rats get all organised. And I'm loving that series. The chalk. You don't get the science either. Yes, um, there's a lot of chalk binder in gouache. It's mostly pigment and binder. It's not dissimilar to watercolour. It's just um, a slightly different version. I'm going to put out a little bit of dark purple so I can put some... A little bit of shading but not much. I might do her skirt dark purple and her top light uh, purple. I'm just colour blocking at this point. I'm not doing fine colouring. That will come later. I like this orange colour. I'm going to use that for my pumpkin as a basis. Don't need very much for that one. I think her hat will probably do in the purple again. Her hair, well she's going to be redhead isn't she? So... <laughs> It's either going to be crimson or burnt sienna. Now, this is one thing that I have noticed. These colours here don't necessarily correspond to what the actual paint colour is. I noticed it particularly with the crimson red. I was a bit like, but that's burnt sienna. 
because those colours are identical on the col on the tin. But actually, when you look at the paint, it's a very different colour. Uh, so I'm going to go with crimson because I like my redheads. That should be enough, I think. Whereas this one, you can see, is actually brown. Maybe I'll put a little bit of that out as well, just for a little variation in her hair. But you can see there quite clearly, they are definitely two different colours. But on the tin, they actually look very similar. I found the same with the watercolour pencils. So uh, I would say always do swatch tests. Uh, and don't go by the, the, like the box that I had with the reference colours is, is much more precise than the colours on here. But these give you a guesstimate of what you're looking for. I tend to pick a couple of colours of what I think is what I'm looking for and then work with from there. I might need that one in a minute. Okay. Now for gouache, I've tried to use the watercolour brushes, these ones, for the gouache. And what I find is it leaves streaks. It's great for the watercolour pencils, but they're a little bit too hard for the gouache. So I'm going to use my preferred brush for this, which is just a no name brand kind of white bristle brush. It's actually for acrylic, um, but it's a lot softer than the those. Do you need to seal your tin? Um, it depends on the tin. This is galvanized steel and it's not rusted so far. I think because I use it and then before I close it, I wipe it out. I don't put out a load of paint and just leave it. Um, I think it will be okay. So I wipe it out and dry it every time I use it. Uh, I think if you were gonna leave paint in it, it might corrode over time. As and when it does corrode, I'll just spray it with a layer of varnish. Ordinary varnish that sticks to um, acrylic. Ordinary acrylic varnish will work or resin, anything like that would work. Okay, oh, I didn't put a colour out for my moon. That's a nice colour, pale yellow. This is a bit like Naples yellow, this one. It's a very, very cr creamy. I'm going to put a good dollop of that out because I want it to be nice and dark and opaque. Is that all the colours I need? I think so. Let's see, shall we? I can use that for the white of the, the eyes of the pumpkin as well. So, start the top and work down. I use a slightly damp brush for gouache. And what you'll notice if you use these gouache as opposed to, if you've bought really cheap gouache before, because we all do it, don't we? We look at the artist grade gouache and go, how much? <laughs> and then we go, oh, this set in like the works is only £2.50. I'll just get a set of that. <laughs> that will do. And then we try it and we're like, what is this, poster paint? <laughs> and we're infinitely disappointed. The thing I like about this is that it's a cheap it's cheap, as in it doesn't cost a lot of money. Cheap. But the actual quality of the paint is lovely. It's very much, uh, for comparison, what it feels like to paint with. If you use the fresco finish paints, that's very much what it feels like to paint with. It's creamy. It's like whipping cream. Imagine painting with whipping cream. That's what it feels like. And there's still tippy tapping going on in the kitchen. I don't know what is up with, with Boo. So in order to get this to cover and get a nice edge, I'm actually going over into the watercolour here. And I don't add extra water. I'm not adding extra to the paint. I'm just painting with the paint itself. I did start with a damp brush though. Uh, damp, not soaking. So similar to painting with acrylic where you don't start with a wet brush, you just start with a little bit of water on your brush and you mix that into the paint. Now when I said earlier about your paint will crack and go horrible and not be able to be re-wet straight out of the tube, if I left this to dry here, this 
over, over, within a couple of days, it would just be rock solid blobs of paint and I would have to really, really wet it down and oversaturate it to get it to work. And it will never be the same beautiful creamy consistency. Although these, these do re-wet a lot better than most I've used. Um, but because I've used a very tiny and like literally I just tipped the dip of dipped the tip of my brush in the water just to re-wet my brush and then you mix it with the paint like this once it's in this format with a little bit of water in it I can go back in and re-wet this as many times as I like and it comes back beautifully creamy every time so it's a little bit magic actually spoiler I'm completely in love with these gouache okay I, I will say that now hands down of all the products that Arteza sent me, these are the ones that when they are gone, I will buy them again. Absolutely hands down. Um, I will do the same with the colour pencils. I like the colour pencils, uh, but I bought those. They didn't send me those. Uh, but the fact that I bought them in the first place should tell you that they're okay. Um, I, the, the jury's out on the watercolour pencils simply because I'm not a huge fan of watercolour pencils don't love them. I prefer, if I'm going to paint, I prefer to paint with actually watercolour pens. I would like to try their brush pens. I think that would be fun. Um, the watercolour pencils are convenient, but they're not saturated enough for me to compare with watercolour paint. I would rather use watercolour paint and they're not heavily pigmented enough and creamy enough for watercolour pencils. So I'd rather use watercolour pencils and watercolour paint. But I'm a mixed media artist. Remember that. That's, I'm not just, you know, colouring in a colouring book. I, that's what I do. I'm a mixed media artist. Like I said before, for somebody like Risha, who only uses watercolour pencils, I think they'd be fine because she likes to use them wet and dry. And if you're going to use them for both, then yes, you could you could do that easily. So again, I've, you've just seen I washed my brush and I've cleaned it. I'm going to half dip my brush in the water and then against the, the thing of the paint, the pot. And then I mix that with the paint. And that seems to be enough to stop the paint going really clumpy and drying out. And I can come back and re-wet this. Now it does dry out faster as well, I found. So this cream is already dry. See? Mostly. The bit in the middle wasn't. <laughs> um, it looked dry. It wasn't underneath. Um, so that's mostly dry, but I can go rack in and re-wet it again. So... Again, I'm just blocking. I'm not doing anything too fancy. I'm just blocking and going in slightly over the, where the watercolour is. I find with gouache that a good tip is to use short dabby strokes rather than trying to do long washes. Um, like you would with acrylic or with watercolour paint. Um, keeping that edge damp seems to be the key. So I, I kind of work side to side, keeping that edge damp there. I'm going to go in and do this edge as well. A bit more paint to do. If you want to get a really clean edge, add a little bit more water to your brush and then do the edge. Like that and then go back and back fill the bit that you want to colour. It's getting a bit goopy. I can feel it. It gets kind of sticky. That's when you want to add just a tiny touch more water to it. Nothing over here. And 
back fill. Short strokes and it should come out nice and even. Let's do her top. Not overly happy with her neckline here, but I can change it with what we put over the top. And again, with the going into the hair, I'm very slightly painting into the hair. <clears throat> and then I'll just be very careful when I do the hair itself, not to overly agitate the paint, the purple. I'm having trouble thinking and breathing today. <laughs> so because I'm just blocking, I'm going straight over my pencil. Because I can see where my pencil is going to be. You can't see it, but I can see where my pencil is. Whoops, didn't want to do that. Never mind. And paint over it, squash. There's a little bit of purple in here. I'm just going to fill in. And some down here. And let me raise that watercolour pencil slightly where I didn't make it wet. And that should be enough for me to be able to paint over it with gouache, I think. Bit of an experiment, not really done that before, but you know. Always paint away from your tape, otherwise you run the risk of having tape go seeping in underneath. hot under the studio lights I don't normally when I'm painting without lights I don't normally have to wet it this much to keep it active but it's quite hot under the lights here for filming We've conveniently covered that up with hair, so we don't need to paint that bit. Maybe I'll paint this bit in. I can paint over it. Okay, so now I'm going to take the... <coughs> A lot of message retracteds happening like today. Is that is that you guys deleting your comments or is that YouTube doing it because YouTube does it sometimes and it's a bit weird okay a little bit of water into the purple scoob whatever you're licking can you stop please it's gross that's a very bright purple it's a lot brighter than I expected so let's go in here with 
is where her frilly band for her dress is going to be. So put it along there somewhere and just block this in. Might have put a little bit too much water in that purple, it's gone kind of goopy. So I think what I'll do, I'll just, let's just cover the rest of it so it's got an even layer. I'm going to mix this in with this one because it's a little bit more creamy. Most people mix their gouache with white to get kind of pastel creamy colours. I don't tend to bother most of the time, but I do like to do tone on tone where I'll do a lighter colour with a darker colour to make it creamier. See how that's making a lot a lot darker colour because it's mixing with the colour underneath, but it's also opaque now. You can't see the brush strokes in it anymore. It looks the same colour on the tin because it's picking up the light, but it's not, I promise. It's a beautiful heather purpley grey. It is. It is great. It is heather. That's what I would call it. Heather. That colour. That's heather. This is a much darker purple. It's actually pinker. Okay, some more blocking in. Let's do, I'm going to do the pumpkin down here. The pumpkin, this orange is actually quite thin and I might have to do two coats of it, which is why I've got a little bit more of it than I would normally use. But what I normally do when I finished painting with this is I'll just spray it with a bit of water and I'll just throw the colours into my junk journal. So a little bit wetter than I normally would to get a nice clean edge. And don't go over and over and over it because you will pick up the purple. See how the, can you see there the purple is kind of showing through the orange a little bit? It's because the orange is not entirely opaque. So I'll probably need two coats of the orange. Whereas the cream you can see is completely opaque straight away. This one you can see, and I found this with a lot of the darker colours, they're not completely opaque. You can see the pencil lines through the orange. You can certainly see the watercolour through the orange, whereas that creamy grey, can't see anything through it. So the thickness, the consistency of the consistency is not consistent. But um boom I know, I know. I'm here all week. You're an autumn girl like me, Lisa. Okay, I want to make that a little bit creamier. So what I'm going to do is use the, where's the pale yellow? There's the pale yellow. I want to put out just a tiny bit more pale yellow because I want to use it for his eyes anyway. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of it and mix it into here like I did with the, with the grey, uh, the purple. So it's not going to be pastel orange, it's just going to be a slightly lighter, more opaque orange. And then when I put it down on here, on top of the dark orange, it will pick up the colour and it will go darker than it is on the palette. Does that make sense? It's all about layering darker over thicker and lighter and all that good stuff. That's got a shadow there, but I'll use it as a shadow on the pumpkin. Let's cover up that bit a bit more thickly. There we go much more opaque. Now you can't see the pencil. That's a good colour actually, I like that. I am very much an autumn girl. 
I like winter as well, don't get me wrong, but winter is for <coughs> winter is for staying indoors, looking at the snow and going, oh, I'm glad I'm not out in that. Whereas this time of year is like, I really just want to put my coat on and go for a walk. I just want to be outdoors all the time. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and I'll come back to it in a second. Let's do, now before I mix this brown into the red to do her hair, I'm going to mix a little bit of that brown with a little bit of that cream to do the stick. So a little bit more water than I would normally use because I want a nice clean edge. Scoob, will you please sit down? You're doing my head in now with your tippy tap in. Come on. Nice, clean lines. Oh, I've got something on my hand. Straight down. Yep, there we go. That'll do. I don't know what I did there. I think I had orange on my finger. Let it dry. Paint over it. The freshly collected autumn leaves. Yeah, the, the, as soon as they get wet, they get all soggy and bleh. I don't like them when they're wet and soggy. Scoob. Do do. Come here. Scoob, you're being a dork. Come here, love. Come here. Come here. You're tippy tapping, I know. What are you tippy tapping for? You don't even know. He doesn't even know. He's consumed by the darkness. Poor love. Oh, I need a flesh tint as well. I didn't put a flesh. Now, ah, here's something else I noticed. Uh, I don't know if this is a misnomer or just something weird or what. If you get the smaller boxes of gouache from Arteza, they have a flesh tint in them. But the 60, which is supposed to have all the colours in, doesn't have a flesh tint in it. It does, however, have a light apricot and a peach one. Um, not that one, that's super bright. What's it called? It's definitely this one. I think the light apricot is the flesh tint under another name. Pumpkin spice lattes. Pumpkin spice like Costa have run out of pumpkin spice lattes already. I'm sorry, bonfire spice lattes. Uh, no, it's not in here. I must have imagined there being another one. See, that's Naples yellow, but it's almost identical to that colour. This is why I don't think this many paints for a beginner is helpful. I think it's easier to have fewer paints. But that's me. Also, you'll find there's a titanium white and there's a white. The white is a mixing white. It's a zinc white. The titanium white is the one that is completely opaque. Just so you know. Yeah. Yeah. This is it. The light apricot is, it is a flesh tint, but I don't know if it's the same colour as the flesh tint that's in the, um, 24 set. So, uh, I, I meant to check that with Anna, actually, with, uh, the girl at our teaser before I did this and I completely forgot so that's something I'll have to check up on and find out I'm pretty sure this is the same colour poppy is it the moon uh it's probably well Scorpio today isn't it all the dark and dark and creepies start tonight some went into Scorpio today 
and the dark moon is in Scorpio on Friday, 25th. Okay. So, oh, I want to do, let's reactivate this. So, I mean, it once it's been lift, um, mixed with water already, you get that creamy consistency again when you re-wet it. I just realised I didn't do the old underneath of her hat there. So I'll just do it in. Like that, that'll do. You can always go over it with pencil or whatever. Okay, now I've left this band deliberately because I'm going to use the metallic purple because the metallic purple is really nice. And then I'm going to use the, reactivate the brown, mix it with a bit of the red to get a kind of burnt red colour. This is a bit too, the crimson is a little bit too red and the burnt sienna is a little bit too brown. But you mix the two together and you get lovely red headed colour. Again, at the moment, I'm just blocking. Oh, that was silly. Now that's still wet. Okay. Uh, oh, it'd be alright. Oh, and now the fireworks have started. Excellent. Maddie's asleep, so at the moment we don't have anything trying to crawl up my head. But if Maddie wakes up hearing the fireworks, she'll be trying to crawl into my jumper with me and we'll have to stop. I'm going to get this layer down today. Obviously, mixed media takes more time than other types of painting. Well, no, that's not true. It's a, uh, it's not a quick process. Mixed media is not a quick process. So I do tend to be quite slow. Now I'm being careful here because I don't actually know how that flesh tint is going to cover this red. I probably should have done the flesh tint first. Generally working lighter to darker is a good idea but uh, I need to use that red before it dried too much. Uh, I also had a bit of hair coming out here. Where is it? There it is. Not being too exact with this again, it's just tendrils that we can tidy up later. Should probably have a bit coming out behind her stick here for depth. Oops, that's a little bit too much. Oops, let's try and split that into two, shall we? There we go. Uh, actually, let's have it coming down here behind the pumpkin. Yep, made a complete pig's ear of that, but never mind. This is the beauty of gouache. You can just paint over it and it doesn't matter. Maybe she should have some little tendrils of hair coming down under here as well. Red-headed girls with ridiculously long hair? Absolutely. <laughs> That's completely what we're into. That's her dress. 
and I think this is now still nice and wet. Poppy looked up. Ah, oh, hi Poppy! Poppy! I have that effect on animals, I don't know why. It's your sister's birthday tomorrow and she's scary. Most Scorpios are. I find them scary anyway. Having dated a couple. Yeah, don't, don't do it. I'm not going to be too precise about this bit around her face and worry about what her face is going to be like afterwards. A little bit more water in that, that's drying out a bit. So now I'm moving on to the hair that's in the front, I'm adding more red, which you can probably tell because it's going a little bit less opaque than it was before. I don't know if that's picking up on camera, but oh, is there anything better than the combination of purple with red hair? And yet I have red hair and I never wear purple. This is making me want to do my hair super bright red for, for Halloween. Now. Yes, having just gone back to my natural ginger, I immediately want to change the colour again. But come on, look how red, look how red, it's awesome. This pinky magenta red is beautiful. Okay, let me think about where I want her hair to go now. So let's do it here. And here. And take that bit off the side there. Get some more brown. Scoop, what are you doing? You weirdo, he's licking cardboard. He's the weirdest animal. What did your dog do today? Oh, tip down, towed around the kitchen, licked some cardboard. Okay, so there is the main blocking for her, her thing. And I think, given the time, because I talked so much at the beginning, what I'm going to do is finish off the blocking and then I'll do another session Friday afternoon after Twitch and finish it off with the pencils and the ink and the, the layers because that means the gouache will be completely dry then. So we'll do another session on Friday. I'm going to grab my metallic colours. These are my the metallic colours. There is a lovely movie, silvery movie grey colour in here somewhere, if I remember correctly. There we go. Pearlized purple. Oh, purple iris. Pearlized purple iris. Look how pretty this is. I only need a tiny bit and I'm going to drop my brush down to a smaller brush. I'm just going to do that ribbon at the bottom so it looks like I swear of Roman is Ramblers. Oh yeah that was Lisa, that was your hubby wasn't it came up with that. Let me get into a smaller brush for this bit. That's not the brush I like, there's the brush I like. Got something on it. What colour has it got on it? Okay, look at this metallic. You can see the shine on the metallic, right? So same thing again. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of water, but it just, it's still creamy. It's still creamy. I'm a huge fan of these gouache. I'm sorry, but that's the proof of pudding is I love these gouache. 
if I was going to say to all my students, OK, what would be the best of the things that I was I was sent to try? What would be the best one to get? I would say if you love painting with like matte paints, get the gouache set. If you like watercolour and you want to try watercolour pencils, then yes, the watercolour pencils are a good option. But these gouache, man, oh. Did I mention I love these gouache? I actually haven't stopped using them since I got them. You can tell by how battered my, my tubes are. Look. <laughs> they are not pristine at all because I keep taking them out with me. Even in the tin, I'll take the whole tin out and go urban sketching because they're just so good. It's a bit tricky if it gets too cold or too wet because they don't dry properly and then you run the risk of your paper going mouldy and stuff like that but yeah for the most part I do like urban sketching with these a lot more than I like urban sketching with watercolour in fact which is impressive because I don't think anybody ever thought I would give up my watercolours for urban sketching and yet here we are <laughs> Can you see the shine on that? Look, that's just one coat, completely opaque. Look at that shine. Isn't it gorgeous? Do I like the gouache? I like the gouache, Lisa. I do like the gouache. This gouache, I love it. The gouache can be a little bit tricky to use. And uh, I find a lot of people, especially beginners, they get put off by buying super cheap sets because it's that or like 120 quid for a really good artist quality premium set. This is a premium set. I don't think it's artist quality quite. I think it's a bit better than student grade. But it's really nice to paint with. So... You know, why spend three times as much for five tubes when you can get all this for the same pro for a third of the price? I mean, it's just a no brainer for me. Plus, I'm really lazy and I don't like mixing colours. So you're not convinced that I really like the gouache. I really like the gouache. I do love it. You, if you can go and have a look on my Instagram, actually. I've done a lot of urban sketching with it. I don't have my urban sketching book with me. It's in the in the car in my urban sketching thing. I'll try and remember to bring it in for next week. But, um, yeah, the uh, I use it on the Moleskine watercolour paper. And it, it, it's like hyper-realistic. Hyper-realistic. Oh, actually, I know what I can do. because I'm sure that most of you have seen it but just for those of you who don't have Instagram or don't follow me there mm. at Romany Scoob what is the matter with your sassy little self uh, let's get my Instagram up and I'll show you one of the things I did with it which was there you go there's one of the things I did That's just this gouache and a pencil. I did use a little bit of pencil over the top, but not a huge amount for this one. Just a bit of black pencil on the windows and the floor. Uh, that's one I did over on Twitch. Where it's, this is the first two layers on this one. So I'm one layer ahead than I am here. Uh, I need to finish that one actually because it's already sold. I just remembered that. A friend of mine wants to buy it. See? 
got the details you can get with it. It's so cool. Yeah, there's 12 metallic gouache. Well, they're called pearlescents, but they look metallic. That's what this purple is. That's what this is. See the shine on it? And when it's dry, if you buff it a little bit, it comes up even shinier. It's fabulous. So I've just been cleaning my brush really, really well. Hi, Bertzla. He is so me emo today. He really has. The darkness has consumed him. He's so emo. Are you all Scorpio today, Scoob? Should we rename you? Should we rename you to Scorpio? He's got the moans. So I've given this a really good clean. What I do find, and this happens with all gouache and some acrylics, it gets stuck up in the middle of your brush. So if you're swapping from a dark colour to a light colour, give your brush a really good clean like that by pinching the bristles and then going like that. Because see, there's still colour coming off on the towel. That way you won't contaminate the colour. Now I'm going to use this peach colour. It's called light peach. It's a little bit too... Oh, it's dried out under the lights. It's a little bit too dark for the colour that I want. So I'm going to take some of the creamy yellow, mix it together, and that should give me pretty much a foundation colour. There we go. So that is pale yellow plus that light apricot. Gives you a really good flesh colour. So I'm going to block in our hand first. Oh, a bit missing there. I'll have to fill that in later. He is very emo today. I don't know what's up with him. Add a little bit more water than normal so I can. I'd rather add more water and do two coats than have it go patchy on her face. Because the face is generally. highlight of the painting right so I'm just going to paint her whole face I'm not going to do her eyes but I'm just going to do her whole face in one go because it's slightly opaque whoops it's picked up the red but that's on her ear so that's okay ears are always a little bit a little bit redder a bit pinker than the rest of the face You watch the rerun. What I'll do for um, for the sake of having a, a shorter video for those who just want to see how the products work uh, is after I'll finish it Friday with the pencil and the pen detailing and then I'll do the two videos together like sped up with a voiceover like you would normally do a painting video or like most people do painting videos. I wouldn't normally do a painting video like that, but I like painting in real time. So I'm going to use a little bit of the more peachy end to do her neck where it's a bit darker. I'm going to be a bit more careful going down that red because I don't want to pick up the red. This is a really good base layer to do her colour pencil over for her pen, for her, for her pen. Colour pencil over for her face. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of the peachier colour and add it to the base layer. So I'm, I've got the mix of the two and then I've taken a little bit more peach to get darker and a little bit more cream to get lighter. So I'm using three colours. I'm just going to run that down the middle of her face on her nose. Just literally just catch her highlights. I'm not doing too much in the way of light and dark. I'm just, I've got to do a second layer anyway, so I might as well just put in highlights where I think it needs them. 
bit of highlight there, a little bit of highlight on this cheek. And then I'm going to go back in, I'm going to go back in with the cream actually, just the cream on its own and do over that ear because that's a little bit too red. So cream plus red equals sort of the colour we started with. Here we go. Uh, let's add a touch of the red because I like I like to use a similar colour palette and just mix it all together to get the same colours. So I'm going to mix a little bit of the red with a little bit of the apricot. Like that, just to get a shadow colour. So I can use that for her ear under her chin. Under her nose. Under her lip. Actually, I can do her lips in that colour as well, because I can tidy them up with pencil later. Under her hat, up here, because that will be shadowed. Uh, a little bit under her eyes. I'm not going to town on this. I'm just doing basic blocking where I know there's going to be. And then she's going to have peachy cheeks warm cheeks so I might as well put a little bit of pink there as well and we can do the rest with um, pencil. Scoob! What is the matter? Why are you so emo today babe? What is the matter my love? As it gets darker outside <laughs> the light is getting brighter in here so it's starting to get a little bit too bright to film under the bare lights that moon really is glowing isn't it but you can see her her shadowed face now it's just like adding bits where she would get sunburnt and bits where she would catch the light I can refine it with pencil or I can even go back in with a damp brush later like a water brush and just refine or shade because this will reactivate with water really easily. So the last thing I'm going to do is just throw in some light in the eyes of the jack-o'-lantern. I can still see where his eyes are not going to be as opaque as when I first put it out but it will do for now. It will do as a first layer. Boo! And of course it's reactivating the orange underneath so it's not really going cream. It's not the same colour as the moon, so it's technically green eyes for your lady. Absolutely. I'll do that with pencil, though, because it's it's far too tiny to try and do it with gouache. I mean, I could, but I'm lazy and I'm a mixed media artist, so I'll do it with pencil. I might even use the actually I might use the pen because there's a really nice dark bottle green. Okay, so what am I missing? Uh, I need to go over that again with some more cream. I'm not being too fussy about this because I can go in and do it with white pencil as well. The more I get it wet the more it's going to reactivate what's underneath so it, it's kind of pointless trying to completely opaquely do it but I want to make sure I get where the things are. Uh, that's going to all be detailed in pencil or pen, detail in pencil or pen, detail in pencil or pen. Let's do a little bit more. Let's do another
See, it reactivates really easily when it's like this, much more easily than it does when it's goopy like that. I'm just going to do another thin layer there of that dark colour. Make it a bit thicker, darker. And I don't need to redo the metallic. That's just gone completely opaque straight away. And I need to do her hand. So I'm going to do her hand a little bit darker than her face. Hands are naturally a little bit darker than the face. So let's put a little bit more colour in there. Again, detailing later. I need to put some more purple in that little bit there because I missed it. And I'm going to use that brown to just tidy up where her hand will be. So her fingers will come round. She had little fingers there and her thumb. Like that. That'll do. He's definitely trying to tell me something. I don't know what he's trying to tell me though. What time am I going live on Friday? Probably about three or four o'clock. It's a little bit earlier than normal he, on a Wednesday. Um, I'm doing Twitch usually one till three. Uh, and then I'll come over and do Friday craft afternoon over here to finish this off. I actually expected to finish this in one session. What was I thinking? It was never going to happen, was it? Okay, so there we go. Oh, no, I don't want to close that. It's... Where's my spray? There she is. This is what I mean about using up the paint. Grab the junk journal. What's my favourite witchy quote? Ooh, what's my favourite witchy quote? Let me think about that while I'm... Oh, well, it's going to be a Granny Weatherwax one, isn't it? It would probably be... Witches ain't superstitious, we're what people are superstitious of. Going to do a bit of edging, a bit of filling out. Uh, I don't know if I can use this much cream, but let's give it a try. Oh, you've got a spot in your junk journal that needs one. Oh, well, anything by Granny Weatherwax. A witch shouldn't be afraid in the forest. She should know without a shadow of a doubt that the worst, that the most terrifying thing in there is her. It's quite a good one. Another fun thing to do with leftover gouache is to paint over stuff that's already there. So like these. Let's make these a bit more autumnal. Add some red to those. Uh, let's add some, get some lavender. Ooh, let's use the metallic. 
and change those green ones to purple. You can go back in with a pencil later and or a pen and zhuzh them up a bit. Wear colours. If you wear black and occult jewellery all the time, you'll look like a raven that's been inexplicably robbed in tinsel. <laughs> me that is I look like a raven that's been rolled in tinsel <laughs> in fact that's me and Rachel going shopping oh shiny <laughs> it's all we say oh shiny I need a bigger brush I'm just gonna whack all this purpley goodness down here it's metallic and it's slightly translucent, so let's put it over that bit and paint around the edges. Oh, that's pretty. I like it. And it's already got some purple gouache on it. That's the same purple. <laughs> I like that purple, can you tell? Does it show? There's a bit of orange to the quote, because it's not my quote, it's from one of the little Raven Inks colour things. Surprisingly enough, it's a colour that I like. I must have reprinted it. And you don't have to wait for gouache to dry either, so it's because it oh, like a little toad there. I'm painting a little toad. Let's put some of this orange on there. Make it look a bit less of like a bit of paper that's been stuck on. There we go, that's cool. Ah, somewhere else to put some purple. So this is all I do. I just go through my junk journal. Just throwing colours down. Because you can write over gouache. It's opaque. This is getting too watered down now to continue using. So I'll stop with the purple. I uh, don't need the flesh tone, I don't think. Have I got anywhere I need some red? No, but I can use that orange in there. Let's go over all of that actually because it's white. Make it look a little bit less stark. If you can now hear snoring in the background, that's Maddie. Obviously, we need some of this red on here. Ooh, yes. Oh, that was a good call. Oh, I love that colour. Maddie likes pink too, so doggy pages tend to have pink on. Oh, she tells me off. See you later, Amber. Very nice, like it, like it, like it. Yeah, just throw it on the page, doesn't matter, throw it on. Actually, I might paint all of that in that nice pinky colour. Since it's quite watered down, it won't cover over the quote. This is gouache as well, so I can blend it into there so it can it won't have a line. There we go. Oh, sorry, you couldn't see what I was doing. You could have told me. See how that all meshes together. And now I can just block this up. This is too watery to do anything with now, unless I'm doing anything specific so I've, it's not a waste <laughs> you know me I hate wasting paint it doesn't matter how much paint I've got I don't hate, I hate wasting it and then I just dry my tin with a regular bit of tissue just to make sure there's no water left on it and then it shouldn't rust unless you scratch it or something so there's my witch 
blocked in and ready for some detailing next week. For those of you who aren't familiar with what I do, this is the kind of additional detailing I tend to do. Oh, that's not. That's just pencil. This isn't a very good sketchbook to show you actually because I don't have a lot of detailing in here. But check out my Instagram. There's the link. No, nope. there's the link. There's the link to my Instagram at Romany. Romanysrel.org.uk is my website. Don't forget to check out the Arteza links below. And also, Arteza has their own YouTube channel, which some of their artists are phenomenal. <laughs> They're amazing. Go and check out their YouTube channel. Link is down below as well. Uh, but if you just search YouTube Arteza channel, they come up. And uh, they've got some amazing showcases of their products as well. Friday, we'll get into some detail and I'm going to leave the sticky tape on. Normally I would take the sticky tape off, but I'm going to leave it. Um, because I want to see if the sticky tape works on this paper. It's just my little experiment for myself. I think it will stick, but we'll see. Thanks for joining me and I will see you all on Friday to continue. See you guys. Bye.